on this episode of What's Going On With Shipping. It's the April 13th update for the grounding of the motor vessel ever forward. Hi, I'm your host, Sal McCoglana. Welcome to this episode of What's Going On With Shipping. So we just did an update yesterday on what the ship on motor vessel ever forward, but the situation is developing very rapidly right now. So I thought I'd do a quick update just to give you a kind of encapsulated small video on everything going on just ever forward. If you're new to the channel, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos when they come out. And if you can, head on over to our Patreon page and consider becoming a member. All right, let's get into the ever forward update. So this is the latest update, update number four to the Marine Safety Information Bulletin posted by US Coast Guard Sector Maryland on April 12th. And they're continuing the safety zone around the motor vessel ever forward. But the key thing here is in the salvage operations sec section. Container removal operations commenced on Saturday, April 9th, 2022, and are anticipated to conclude Friday, April 15th. So it's the first time we're getting an idea when they're gonna conclude. They were able to get off around 43 containers over the weekend. And then on yesterday, they were able to get off approximately about 93 containers. And they're hoping to average about 100 containers a day, dependent on weather conditions and wind. And we'll talk about that in a second. The Marine Safety Information Bulletin continues. Currently, the allowance for one-way traffic at a reduced safe speed through the safety zone will continue throughout the container removal operations. However, commercial vessel traffic must contact the Coast Guard on scene 30 minutes prior to entry. They really don't want with tugs and barges moving to create an obstruction in the channel. Uh, and then they go on here. The equipment required for container removal and future refloat operations are in place. The pull barges remain out of the channel, but the anchoring system for the westernmost pull barge is in the federal channel along with other eastern edge of the channel. The location of these anchoring systems are marked. I'm going to go uh, forward here. Additionally, two crane barges are positioned on the port and starboard side of Ever Forward to facilitate the offload. The stern of the westernmost crane barge encroaches on the eastern side of the channel, although we've seen them on the port side of the vessel, not so much on the starboard side. And it goes on here. I want to jump down to the pulling operation. The Coast Guard will cease the one-way traffic authorization through the safety zone once pulling evolutions commence following the completion of container removal ops. The Coast Guard will update the BNM via VHF Marine Channel 16 once the date and time for pulling operations has been commenced. So if they finish all operations by April 15th, then they've got a window then to try to get the vessel off. And the plan here and the, the ongoing plan has been dredging. So the Dale Pyatt, the big dredge has moved off. She is now at the south end of Craig Hill Channel doing her routine dredging operations. The Oyster Bay remains on position doing dredging around the vessel. The next big high tide is going to be between April 17th and 19th. You'll see right here on the chart about a one and a half foot tide early in the morning. So an early morning evolution, probably on Sunday, Monday or Tuesday to try and pull the vessel off. The plan here is basically this. So here is ever forward. And right now the anchor barges are off the stern of the vessel right here, kind of where the Don Thomas D. Witt is. There are two anchor barges, one on the port, one on the starboard side. You'll see right here, the tugs, uh, here's the dredge Oyster Bay working right here, dredging along the starboard side of the vessel, the channel, the main channel runs right here, north and south. And the cranes are working over here on the port side. So what they want to do is pull her back. Her stern is just about a ship length off the channel. If they can pull her back, start getting her to move backwards, then they can pull her back, pivot that stern into the channel. The big channel is right here. It makes this turn down here and then come southbound. And then they can use the ship's engines and back her off. They have dredged down the starboard side of the vessel off the stern so that they should be able to pull the vessel back into deeper water. They have supposedly dredged down to below the draft of the vessel. And the vessel is not at 42 feet. It's, it's stuck up on mud. So as they pull it back, she's going to come off. And what they want to do is pull her straight back off and then pivot her. So the bow remains on the mud. That'll keep it stable. 
get her get her into deeper water, kick the engine in the stern, and with tugs and other material, pull her back into the channel. That is the ultimate plan to free the vessel, very similar to what was done with Ever Given in the Suez. I want to show you some images. So I've been getting my images from two main sources. One right here, the Maritime Safety Innovation Lab. They are posting their material. This is their April 10th images right here. You can see the cranes working. So one of the things that slows this up a lot is you physically have people up on the containers prepping them. So you actually have to get personnel up there uh, attaching that crane, that uh, spreader bar into the containers, locking it in place. Then they lift up, they should automatically trigger the locks on the bottom as long as the vessel is stable, lift it up and then swing it with tag lines off. So it, it's, it's a labor intensive operation. There are now two tugs and barges working this. They have worked the area aft of the smokestacks and the area between the house and the stacks. Uh, this is looking at the starboard side right here. Here you get a good view of the stern. They have put a big dent in this aft uh, stack here. Uh, you'll see that a little bit more in some photographs in a minute. This is on the port side. There's the forward house. There's the stacks. And you see them working right here. Uh, not a quick operation, but pretty quick for the type they're doing. I mean, it's nowhere near what a ship to shore crane can do, but it's extremely impressive the amount of work they've been able to do. Again, they're operating in fairly shallow water, hence the need for barges and cranes. You can see the big dent they're putting in. You see how much of the house now is being revealed here. Uh, they're doing a good job getting these 40 foot containers. They were also limited by the number of flat deck barges they had. Those barges can handle about 20 containers a piece. So you needed so many uh, barges there to be able to move anything. So Maritime Innovation, uh, excuse me, Maritime Safety Innovation Lab, great source. I'll have it in the show notes. The other one right here is over on Facebook, Dead Rise Marine Photography. Man, great images coming out from Dead Rise here. Uh, this is the tug Atlantic Enterprise right here, moving some of those barges. You'll see it, Atlantic Enterprise was one of the tugs used on the March 29th, 30th evolution to pull her off. Uh, they weren't able to do it, but I'm sure she's gonna be used again. They're bringing the barges to the Seagirt terminal to get offloaded. Those containers are being put onto the terminal. They will eventually be loaded back on to Ever Forward. If Ever Forward is freed, she'll come into Baltimore the hull will be surveyed. They'll send divers down to inspect the hull. They'll get people into the double bottoms to inspect. And if she is seaworthy and, and passes her classification society uh, uh, inspection, she'll be allowed to resume her voyage, go down to Norfolk, offload, head up to New York, New Jersey, offload, and then probably head back to China for a shipyard period. And again, just some great images here on uh, uh, from Dead Rise, uh, I'll show you a couple of more here that they have uh, that they have going on. Uh, they actually caught the arrival of the uh, 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 Stad Amsterdam into Baltimore. So again, if you get a chance, go on over to Dead Rise. This uh, photograph is really interesting. This is one of the two pulling barges that have been set up. This is the one on the starboard side right here. So you'll see it's got two anchors off on windlasses. Uh, generator on the deck here for power, and they'll use those windlasses to pull. They're going to pull on those anchors and try to pull the vessel back. They've got four lines going to the vessel. Each line is hooked onto an individual mooring bit. A mooring bit can handle anywhere from 80 to 100 tons of force. You don't want to hook the one section and yank it out because you will break it. So you got to spread the load out. There's going to be another one of these barges on the port side. They'll go into these four, uh, uh, the, the hawser areas there to basically hook onto the bits. I'm having a brain fart, I apologize. And you'll have another mooring barge right there through the chocks into the area. Here you can see a better image of those anchors, how they're set out there right now. Don't have a big strain on them right now. They've just, they're just holding the vessel tight at this time. And then the, the last photos here from Dead Rise, that I thought were really good was their previous set just before this. Again, some more of those container operations and, you know, very well documented. 
Plus, a lot of the TV stations have some excellent videos that you can look at. I had one in my video yesterday on what the ship from NBC4 News, uh, Mark Seagrave, who I've been talking to, did a great report. And so if you really want to see that, go on over to What the Ship. I'll have the link right up here for you. So that's the latest update. Uh, we will see if they get the rest of the containers off by the end of the week. Uh, and then uh, probably look to do a poll sometime this weekend or Monday. Not sure if they'll do it on Easter Sunday or not, but we'll see when they schedule this. Early morning probably will be the attempt uh, based on that timeline you know again we're looking for that high tide either sunday morning monday or tuesday i would assume monday is when they'll go but i don't have any concrete information on that so if you enjoyed the video please subscribe hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos when they come out give it a thumbs up leave a comment share it across social media and again if you can support the page head on over to our patreon page so until our next video and update on ever forward the sal signing off